So with us here in Abu Dhabi is the co-founder and CEO of All In Together, Lauren Leader, and had such a pleasure with your group earlier today because there's so much time before Morning Joe because it's <laughs> on in the afternoon here in Abu Very Dhabi. Um, but you are looking at some of the metrics surrounding the state of women in the world. What are some of them? What are some of the, the stats you've got that bring us up to date as to how far we've come, but how far we still need to go? Thanks, Mika, and it's so amazing to be here. Congratulations, this is incredibly special and my whole board is thrilled to be here, so Yay. thanks for having us. Right. Um, look, it's a really fascinating time for women and I, look, I track very closely every year, I've talked about it on the show, the World Economic Forum's data on the best and worst countries in terms of gender equality, year after year after year, Iceland, tops the rankings. It is one of the most gender equal nations on earth because they've invested for decades in women's political leadership, in economic security, in child care, and in the infrastructure that you need for women to succeed in terms of health and welfare. And then, unfortunately, these days, the very bottom of the rankings, of course, is Afghanistan. And they yeah. have fallen after so many years of progress. It is heartbreaking to watch on a daily basis uh, the backsliding of women's rights and really how tied that is to the backsliding of democracy in that country. Speaking of backsliding, talk about the U.S. and where it stands in all of this. So right Right now, the United States is ranked about 27th in the world in terms of gender equality. And I think what surprises people is the countries that are ahead of us on the list. It's not just the Nordic countries and the countries in Western Europe that you would think of. Rwanda, mm -hmm. South Africa, uh, N Namibia, mm -hmm. where the First Lady just visited. Mm -hmm. Countries all over the world that have continued not just to invest in women's health and economic security, but in their political power. And of course, 67 other nations have had women heads of state. Not the United States, not I yet. Talk well, about, okay, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say, when you, when you talk about women in the United States, you look at outcomes. We, we, we talk an awful lot, obviously, about, uh, about Roe being overturned. We can even talk about out, outcomes uh, uh, of childbirth. Not yeah. good for women in America. In fact, uh, our, our, the rate of, of people that die in childbirth much higher in the United States than across the entire industrialized world. That's right, and across the rest of the OECD countries, maternal mortality has been declining consistently for 30 years, mm. and yet in the United States, it has been increasing at an alarming rate, and we now have among the worst mater maternal mortality outcomes in the world. Why is that? Well, because we've had an erosion of healthcare access for women, rural healthcare has been eroded, um, access to, to um, prenatal care has declined, and because we've underinvested in minority communities across the country in terms of their access to healthcare. one of the things that offends me so much when you talk about uh, pro-life versus yeah. pro-choice, um, it seems to me, and I hear people like David French, who are pro-life, uh, who say this all the time, and that is, if you're going to be pro-life, it, it, it doesn't start at conception and end at childbirth. For some reason, the political party that's the biggest proponent of so-called pro-life policies, they're the same party that's not taking care of women uh, and not, not, not at childbirth and beyond as far as health care outcomes. Women's lives, absolutely. And we saw just today a new lawsuit that is being filed um, by five women in Texas who nearly died in childbirth. Women who wanted their children but who were de denied life-saving care because of the ambiguity of the Texas abortion laws which make doctors fear to treat women when they are at near-death conditions. And a number of the women in those lawsuits are now unable to have children because oh. of the complications from the, um, from the, so the childbirth devastate, you know, the lack of abortion care that they were denied. So look, there's no question around the world, you know, most other nations have ex expanded abortion care. We are one of only three countries in the world that has rolled it back. And it, it speaks to around the world, the understanding that women's health and reproductive rights are so fundamental to their entire, pro the entire access to prosperity in a society. We understood that when Roe, uh, when when Roe happened in the 70s, it's under, other countries understand this. They're inseparable. So, uh, again, given all the different discussions we'll be having here at the 3050 Summit, talk a little bit about the private sector yeah. and the numbers of women in leadership positions. How are we doing? Well, it's really interesting because for years, um, the, it was really a stagnant answer, right? Women had sort of stagnated at a low number, about 20% of women on boards. Women on boards is a real bright spot. Um, across the FTSE 100, you've seen a huge increase in the number of women on boards. 
boards. We now have 15 percent women CEOs in the Fortune 500. That's the highest number ever. It is still too low. Yeah. I think we'd all agree. But it's a huge it's huge progress. The real question is whether um, we're going to start seeing some erosion of that. You talked about it recently, the number of women CEOs that are stepping down, mm -hmm. the pressure that they're under. Um, the pandemic was devastating in terms of women's labor force participation in the United States. It's coming back, but now more than ever, and Joe, this is your point about families and life, we need to support the kinds of policies that make it possible for women to work. We need affordable childcare. Yeah. Um, we need and the flexible infrastructure. Work, uh, and a flexible lot of different... work, all of it. The rest of the world understands that if yeah. you want women in the labor force, you got to support them. The United States needs to catch up on so that. So tomorrow right? is International Women's Day. That's why this summit is on and around International Women's Day. What'll what will you be looking for? I am so excited to see every one of the women that are here. I am like super fan of Billie Jean, of Misty. Um, my board and my colleagues are also excited to be with each other. And there's something so magical about women gathering to focus on their own success and prosperity and our goals for ourselves and also to support each other. And I think that's a wonderful part of this conference. There's so much focused on supporting each other. All right, Lauren Later, thank you so much. Thanks for bringing some friends with you. This is tough summit. duty, let really me tell you. Really amazing. It's not thank bad. You. Tomorrow